mental health is so important. I mean, without it, um, life just isn't as fulfilling. Mental illness affects everyone. And so it is pretty awesome to work for an organization that that's their mission, that's their goal, to make sure that people are healthy mentally. Coming to work every day knowing that we make an impact on individuals' lives, it's exciting. What makes me proud is the fact that we are helping almost 25,000 people every year. If you can change somebody's life, you not only change them, you change the trajectory of their lives, their children's lives, and their families' lives. And I think that just the ability to know we're doing that every day makes everyone that works here really proud. People are getting employed every month, are seeing people going into fields in mental health. They want to give back to the community that's been helping them out. With an organization like Pacific Clinics that is helping people with uh, low income who are homeless to receive not just mental health services but all these different supportive services is so important. People that I know personally that have gone to Pacific Clinics and met with a counselor, you know, met with somebody, a therapist, and uh, I've had them come back and say no, they're good, they're good, they listen. I visit every single location and you see the interaction of helping folks. It, it comes from the heart. I hear it time and time again, Pacific Clinic saved my life. This doctor saved my life. This person gave me hope. It really is beautiful. I'm very proud to work at Pacific Clinics. I feel like we have a real mission to help people. I am proud of what we do here. We're changing lives every single day. We are the people of Pacific Clinics. Hello everyone, coming up next, Pacific Clinic celebrates its 95th anniversary with a special online event, an evening in Tuscany, with your host, ABC 7's Ellen Leva and David Ono. To enjoy the full experience, we recommend that you grab a second device, like a cell phone or a tablet, and use that to visit pacificclinics.org forward slash champions. There you can register to win a $500 gift card, plus you'll be ready to participate in the live auction and more. So stay tuned now for an evening in Tuscany. Come along with us as we raise a glass and take you on a trip through the rolling hills of Italy for an evening in Tuscany. Tonight we salute Pacific Clinics as it celebrates 95 years of providing mental health services across the Southland. I'm David Ono. Most years our annual celebration brings us together for a fun evening of food, wine, entertainment, and of course fundraising for a worthy cause. But tonight we are gathering virtually with the help of lots of cameras, laptops, and a really good internet connection. And even though we can't be together, we've got lots to share with you tonight. We have a wine tasting coming up later, and some of you will be participating at home, so get those glasses ready. And we'll have some special awards, including our Champions of Mental Health Award. This year, honoring basketball great Shamiqua Holtzclaw. We'll have special appearances by NBA great Meta Sandiford Artest, formerly known as Meta World Peace. He's a true friend of Pacific Clinics. And television personality and mental health advocate Julianne Huff. She'll be joining us to receive our Ambassador Award. And we've got some great auction items too and a chance to win a $500 gift card. To tell us more about that, let's go to our gala auctioneer, Zan Ofterheide. Thanks, Ellen. We've got lots in store tonight. In just a little while, we'll start our virtual raise the paddle. So high rollers, stand by. I can see already that some of our most honored donors have logged into the bidding page and we are so thrilled and grateful to you for joining us this evening. 
Now, for those of you just getting started, you can get in on that bidding by joining us at pacificclinics.org slash champions and register with a credit card. There's absolutely no obligation to bid. It's completely free. And when you do register, you're going to be automatically registered to win a $500 gift certificate later in the evening. So go ahead, register for the auction items. Again, it's free, doesn't cost you anything, and you might win $500. Also, you'll be able to browse and bid on our great auction items as we go. All right, friends, right now we're less than 15 minutes away from our first big challenge, our paddle raise event. This is always lots of fun. So no matter how big or small your checkbook, this is an opportunity for you to help Pacific Clinics to continue with its life-saving work. So stay with us. Now, back to you, David. Thanks, Ann. We'll see you soon. And by the way, you can also access our bidding site by texting CHAMPIONS21 to 76278. That's CHAMPIONS21 76278. You'll immediately receive a link that'll take you right to where all the action is. This year, Pacific Clinic celebrates 95 years serving Southern California. So as we look to the future with hope and optimism, let's pause for a moment to reflect on the past and the journey that has made this treasured organization what it is today. I wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for Pacific Clinics. Working hard on my recovery and working hard with my therapist, it really helped me a lot. I wouldn't be where I am right now. And God knows I cannot be lying. For all these outstanding people that God put in my life and helped me get you know, back on track. It all began in 1926 with the opening of the Pasadena Child Guidance Clinic. As the years went by, Pacific Clinics grew to include services for teenagers and adults, implementing modernized treatment and compassionate care. Today, Pacific Clinics provides urgent mental health services for thousands, including temporary housing, employment services, and over 300 in-school programs. And Pacific Clinics continues to provide training for mental health professionals as well as clients wishing to pursue higher education. Multicultural services include the Asian Pacific Family Center, the HIRAP program serving the Armenian community in Glendale, Portals Division in South Los Angeles, and the Latino Youth Program in Santa Fe Springs. In 2013, Head Start and Early Head Start programs were added to address the needs of kids and young families in underserved communities. In 2020, the coronavirus pandemic created a mental health catastrophe. So, once again, Pacific Clinics expanded its services, reaching out to those in need. They are in a perfect storm of stressors and fear, depression, and anxiety. They need us more than ever. Pacific Clinics rolled out expansive in-home treatment through video conferencing. Hey, Marina, what's going on? How are you doing? Hey, Matt. I'm good. Today's a good day. For 95 years, Pacific Clinics has recognized mental health is something we all deserve. And quality treatment should be available to everyone, regardless of income. We have a shared vision. We have a shared passion of wanting to save lives and change lives, because that's what we do. We have a resilient team. We have a passionate team who are eager to provide quality care and services to clients. And that's our drive. They're dedicated. Uh, they give beyond self and they care about others. And during this pandemic, it was never more evident. Pacific Clinic services and programs are needed more than ever. And we're so grateful for our donors that continue to give unselfishly to really impact the lives of those we serve. Pacific Clinics really is doing an incredible job of providing mental health services to our underserved communities, especially during a time like this. And now the man in charge, Chief Executive Officer, Jim Bala. Thank you, Ellen and David. We're so honored to have both of you as our co-host once again this year. And thank all of you for joining us this evening in our celebration as we honor those who have contributed significantly to support mental health. This celebration is one that I look most forward to, appropriately held during Mental Health Awareness Month, where our dedicated supporters come together to recognize distinguished individuals 
who lend their personal stories and unique voices to advocate on behalf of others. Tonight, we will be encouraged and inspired by three remarkable individuals who each in their own way and by sharing their personal story, raise up the importance of mental health and help to remove the stigma associated with mental illness. I'm equally proud and humbled by our remarkable team at Pacific Clinics. Their collective efforts serve as our agency's hallmark in providing a broad array of behavioral health, substance use, early childhood education, housing, and employment services, and doing so with a focus on the needs of our diverse and underserved communities. In closing, it is important to recognize that our agency's work would not be possible without the individual and collective efforts of our board of directors and our associates board. These leaders volunteer tirelessly and give generously of their time, professional oversight, and personal resources to support Pacific Clinic's mission. Lastly, I want to take this moment to acknowledge our event committee co-chairs, Kent Crawford and Mike Dunn, who have been instrumental in leading the planning for this year's event. Thank you, gentlemen, for your support and dedication. As the co-chairs of this year's Champions of Mental Health, it is appropriate on this occasion that you share a few words, offer a toast to officially launch this evening's celebration. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Wow, what a year. We've learned so much about ourselves since a global pandemic forced us to learn to bake bread, teach our kids algebra, and to make homemade hand sanitizer. For some of us, it was great to stay off the freeways, work from home, and try to decide which Zoom backgrounds made us look like we were really on vacation. But for all of us, the pandemic was no joke. For so many clients of Pacific Clinics, it was a test of courage and resilience. For those in underserved communities, it may have been a whole family in a small apartment trying to juggle online schoolwork while looking for a new job. It may have meant loneliness and isolation and an understandable fear about this strange new virus that seemed to be everywhere. It meant more people depending on Pacific Clinics to be there, to continue to provide essential mental and behavioral health services. And Pacific Clinics was there. From day one, Pacific Clinics employees mobilized to maintain services. The IT team quickly accessed extra laptops and webcams. Clinicians reached out to clients by phone and began doing sessions by video conference. But for many clients, in-person services are essential. So teams of employees retooled office space to meet safety protocols. There were new sanitation standards, plexiglass barriers, personal protection equipment, vehicles were modified and new systems put in place. It was an enormous effort. Our team knew that the work of Pacific Clinic simply couldn't be put on hold. Our work is essential to thousands who visit our more than 50 sites in California. So tonight, let's raise a glass to the people of Pacific Clinics, to those who provide frontline medical services, to clinicians who continue to provide essential therapy, the cleaning and maintenance crews, and everyone who worked tirelessly to provide administrative and support services. Here's to you, to all you have accomplished, to your commitment to service, and to our community. Here's to you, and to a bright future ahead. Salute. Cheers. Cheers. Salute. Thanks, everyone. Our first host of the evening. Thank you, guys. And of course, as you've heard, the essential work of Pacific Clinics is made possible by the generous support of our donors. Tonight, we want to thank Blue Shield of California and Epic Insurance Brokers and Consultants for making tonight's event possible. There are so many people to thank tonight, and here are just a few of the companies and individuals who are helping Pacific Clinics change lives every day.
So let's get started with our first award of the evening. Julianne Huff is a dancer, actress, singer, and songwriter, best known for her appearances on TV's Dancing with the Stars. She's had leading roles in Footloose, Rock of Ages, Safe Haven, and the live television production of Grease. What you may not know is that Julianne is a mental health advocate who has spoken publicly about her own battles with anxiety and depression. She is dedicated to destigmatizing mental illness and has worked to create public conversation, encouraging others to seek the help they need. So tonight, with gratitude for her courage and dedication, we present our Ambassador Award to Julianne Huff. Good evening, everyone. I'm Julianne Huff, and I am so honored to be here. Thank you so much, Pacific Clinics, for, for honoring me with the Ambassador Award. I am truly humbled to be recognized by an amazing organization whose work supports better health and well-being for more than 22,000 people every year. Your programs and services have been especially important this year um, as we have all been navigating uh, the challenges of the pandemic and when so many people felt isolated or alone. The Pacific Clinics team, you guys were there, offering hope to those experiencing depression and so many other mental illnesses. As a dancer, actress, singer, songwriter, entertainer, I have always needed to express myself through performance and to be able to perform at the very highest level. And to achieve these things, um, I have always tried, sometimes with more success than at other times, to nourish my emotional health through the arts. I've had days when I have felt so sad, so depressed, so anxious, However, over time, I have learned that self-care makes a positive, positive difference in my life. Dance, movement, and meditation have all been my outlet, and this is one of the ways that I promote self-care each day. It is a special honor to be among the other award recipients tonight, Shamik Holdsclaw and Bernard Taisley, and of course, all of the wonderful past honorees. Thank you, Pacific Clinics, for your amazing contribution and for this award. It means more than you realize. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to highlight your work that is truly making a difference. Did you know that half of all mental health conditions start by the age of 14, and that one in 10 children of all ages experience some kind of behavioral health challenge. For the beginning, Pacific Clinics has been dedicated to helping kids in underserved communities tackle mental health issues so they could learn, grow, and develop into happy, productive adults. Take a look. When Tim and Victoria first adopted their three children, they knew mental health treatment was something they would need. They were separated from their biological family. Our youngest, we picked up from the hospital at two days old. Our oldest, she came home to us at six months old. It is not because we are broken, it's just that we need some different tools in our toolbox. Ther therapies and techniques have changed so much than when we grew up that we need help. It's not a bad thing to ask for help. Edna Parada is their Pacific Clinic's family therapist. I'm hopeful because they are getting treatment early. Um, parents are very involved, um, very motivated in wanting to learn and provide them the resources that they need to be able to be successful. So Edna's helping us out. She's teaching us a different way on how to deal with the tantrums and the fits and the, just the difficulties of children growing up. Whoa! Mental health professionals agree the coronavirus pandemic has been psychologically stressful on kids in particular. Children who are struggling in just average day-to-day -day life, put the pandemic on top of that, that just adds so much more pressure to their lives and they don't understand how to cope with it. I think so many times in mental health, particularly in children, even in adults, 
The uncertainty of not knowing is really what creates the anxiety, the depressions oftentimes, and COVID-19 has just exacerbated that. Pacific Clinics has really helped us as parents to equip us with tools that we can't see in that moment. When we are facing a child who's having a tantrum, having a meltdown, Edna's really come alongside us and given a different perspective. Children who go untreated um, with mental illness turn into adolescents who've been untreated that turn into young adults, who turn into adults. The longer that happens, the impact becomes greater. The harder it is to right size, and the more expensive it is to correct. So children, the sooner we get in, is really critical. We want healthy children to grow up to be healthy adults and have a healthy life and have joy and feel that when things are hard, they can go to people and ask for help. But we want to make sure that they are empowered themselves. We want them to be well equipped to be the amazing people they were created to be. OK, time to get busy and raise a little money. By now, you're all logged into our bidding site at pacificclinics.org slash champions. So let's get that bidding started. We go now live to our auctioneer, Zan Ofterheide. Take it away, Zan. Thanks, Ellen. Gosh, this has been just a great virtual event thus far. And I am so happy and honored to join you again this year. So friends, this is the paddle raise portion of the evening. So make sure that you have your phones close by and ready to donate. Now, if you still need to register, don't worry, you've got plenty of time. Please go to pacificclinics.org slash champions. Go ahead, do it now. I'll wait. I'm kidding, I can't wait that long. It's supposed to be a super fast event, so let's do it. This event, I gotta tell you, is very personal to me. It really is. Um, as a child, I watched my own mother struggle with her mental health and addictions, and she never got the help that she needed. She very dramatically tried to attempt suicide when I was five years old, which then of course creates a child growing up with anxiety and depression. Uh, but she eventually did take her own life, sadly, when I was 23. Now, growing up, I knew that she needed help. But back then, the only treatment facilities that I knew of were places where she'd have to go and stay for a while. But if she were, she was a single mother, and I was afraid to, I don't know what, call 911 and, and, and have her go to one of those places and upend her life. Uh, I just didn't know where to turn. I didn't have the tools. But I know that if there was a place like Pacific Clinics where you could be an outpatient and you could get the help you needed, like attending their self-help groups, which are led by peers that they can trust, a place where they are seen and understood can make all the difference to, to be in a place where you feel like you belong. I believe that my mother would still be here today if she could have found her own Pacific Clinics. So one of the number one comics we get at Pacific Clinics is that it has saved my life. So that's why I'm here today. That's why you are here today is to quite literally help save lives. It's not every day that you're given the opportunity to be a hero, but that's exactly what is happening right now. From donating $10 to $10,000, you are part of something bigger than yourself. You're part of the Pacific Clinics family. And by donating, you're playing a key part in keeping families together. So let's get to it. Now, friends, we have a $50,000 match tonight and a $50,000 goal because our match is coming in from Blue Shield of California. So let's see if we can unlock that match, okay? So get your phones out. Whoa, we're already $20,000 of that $50,000 goal. Fantastic. We've got $10,000 coming in from Richard Dominguez already. That is amazing. Okay, Richard and friends, let me tell you what $10,000 can help provide. Uh, things like independent living skills, uh, teaching and preparing the homeless and mentally ill adults to move into permanent housing, to develop these necessary skills uh, that, that you, know, you might think of as, as, as common, but they are not common when when, you know, sometimes, uh, it, okay, so the things I'm talking about, self-care of cooking, cleaning, grocery shopping, you know, our, the people that come to us may have gone straight from high school into a psych ward or high school into a jail, and they might meet us at 35 years old, and it's the first time that they're doing their own laundry or, or, or understanding that rent is a deadline and why. Russ Chang, thank you for your $1,000. Thank you so much, friends. Keep those donations pouring in. By the way, Richard Dominguez, who kicked us off with that $10,000, is the chair of the Pacific Clinic's Board of Directors. So thank you so much again, Richard. And uh, I know we've got another $10,000. Look at that coming in from 
Kent Crawford of Epic Insurance. Thank you. He's also a co-chair of Pacific Clinic's events committee. That's fantastic. Uh, all right, we're already up to half of our goal. So we're over $26,000. That's great. Let's move down to the $5,000 level, which is going to help provide employment services, technical trainings. Brian Thompson, $250. Thank you so much. This is so important at $5,000 in all of these. Uh, Elva, thank you for your $50. Elva Pachero, thank you for your $50. Every dollar counts again. Thank you so much. So um, $5,000, $5,000 is, again, this is about education and moving forward in life. When um, our, uh, what, what should I say? When, when people come to us and we help them out, it might be the first time that somebody has ever said to them, have you ever thought of working and what would you want to do? It's the first time somebody that has believed in them. Can you imagine? This is what you're doing. You're helping people be believed. Uh, uh, Kathleen Drummy, thank you for your $500. You're helping people find a home where they can get educated. Jim Bala, $2,500. Thank you so much. The $2,500 level helps provide 25 motel vouchers for homeless adults and families. Uh, I want to say thank you to Ellen Weinstein for your $3,000. Thank you. That's amazing. What you're doing is you're supporting things like Okay, the motel vouchers, let me explain them further. Uh, perhaps a woman gets out of jail at midnight and um, they've connected with us and we can help them transition into a stable and safe existence, a safe, sustained life. So that's what you're a part of is helping people get back on their feet. You know, perhaps a family is evicted. Boy, you know, uh, homelessness has gone up 20% during COVID. It, families are being evicted and we can provide a motel and food and toiletries. Denise Jackson, I see your $50. Thank you so much. Hey, we're already up to $40,000. Let's keep this going. I see Lionsgate in for $1,000. Thank you so much. This means the world to me. If you have ever looked around in the past year and you thought, gosh, this is this is rough. What can I do? This is what you can do. Robert Mushler, thank you so much for your $100. We're giving you the answer right now. It's not every day that you're given the opportunity to, to, to know the answer to your question. That's what's happening right now. Let's, let's move on. Oh my gosh, we've got $2,500 from the office of LA County Supervisor Barger. Oh my gosh, two, $2,500. The LA County Department of Mental Health and the supervisors are just Wow, they're such a huge partner for Pacific Clinics, and this is so appreciated. You're just moving me to tears. We're at over $41,000 right now. Marie Condron, thank you for your $500. Oh, please keep pouring these donations in. Nancy Pappas, $100. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to the $1,500 level, and that's going to help provide clothes and shoes for 30 school-aged children so that children don't have to show up every single day in the same darn outfit. Not only is that embarrassing for them, they have to deal with the ridicule or shame from other children and adults. You're providing them clothes for their interviews. Oh my gosh, we've got so much. Uh, Brenda Nicole Bowman for your $200. Thank you so much for getting so close. Oh my goodness. Ellen Leva, thank you so much for your $1,500. You do so much for us. Thank you so much. All right, Leslie uh, Mag. Maroglin, Maroglin, Leslie Maroglin, thank you for your $200. That's beautiful. Okay, we're going to move down to the $1,000 level. We're, okay, Sean Caracosa, I think I got it. <laughs> $50 from Tara Ordaz. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who's donating. Feel free to donate again. Don't let one donation stop you. If you're moved at another level, please donate again. We're at over $43,000. We're almost at our goal. We are so close. Eva Terrazas, thank you for your $200. So I'm going to talk about $100, 100, excuse me, $1,000, one, but go ahead and donate 100 if that's what you would like. $1,000 is going to help provide substance abuse treatment and counseling and case management and its support to adolescents and adults. And I, I promise you, adolescents don't know this that I'm about to tell you, and a lot of adults don't either, that gasoline uh, is, okay, alcohol is the gasoline in our systems to depression and anxiety. So... Alcohol, we think, might help, but is not helping. Oh, my goodness, I just saw a big one I wanted to say thank you to. And Judy Kwan, thank you for your $250. We are so close already. We're at over $47,000. That's amazing. Julia Stewart Yilmaz, thank you for your $250. So this is counseling to understand that, hey, alcohol is not great for you. We all know that. But what we didn't know is that it's gasoline to depression and anxiety and helps that car move. We don't want that. $5,000 from Arpita Choudhury. Thank you so much. We're at only almost $48,000 right now. Let's keep the donations pouring in. Let's move down to that 500. Yes, 
we hit $50,000, but don't let that stop you. I'm going to talk about two or three more levels as we celebrate the fact that we've got our goal met, but let's keep going. All right, we're at the $500 level, which will provide educational materials for six months to our Head Start education program, which you know follows them all the way through adulthood. I wanna say thank you to Mike Dunn, the co-chair of Pacific Clinic's event committee for that. Thank you for your $500. And oh my gosh, there's so much to celebrate. We're at $51,000, $54,000. Warren Riley, thank you so much. You're gonna move on to the next level of $250. It provide this is y'all this is a big one this is this is for the children so this please donate to the therapy for the most vulnerable among us the most vulnerable clients are our children please let's help them nip their issues in the bud while they're early, early in life so they don't have to grow up with the anxiety and depression that will I promise you derail them and it takes a while to get back back on the rails and heading in the right direction. It's possible, but it's harder. So please donate $250 for children to be able to uh, use. Uh, we send them these uh, therapy boxes that they use for telehealth. I'm so excited. Nancy Leahy, thank you for your $50. I'm going to go down to the $100 and then I'm going to wrap it up and keep your donations pouring in. We're at $55,580. I'm loving every minute of this. There is so much to celebrate. $100 if you have it, if you can will help alleviate food insecurity by providing 20 meals for individuals and families. And this is the only healthy meal they might get that week. I promise you what you're doing is important at every level. Scott Fairhurst, thank you for your $250. We're at over $56,000 now. And I'm, and I'm stopping at this $50, excuse me, a uh, $100 level. Donate any $50 if you want, $25 if you want, $10 if you want. Desmond, thank you for your $200. I appreciate you, Desmond Cannon. We're at $56,000 now. Go down to $50. It'll provide uh, hygiene kits for our homeless teenagers and our youth. And if you have a teenager, I don't have to tell you anything about that struggle. Now we want to have a hundred percent participation tonight. So we have even more to celebrate. So any one dollar would make a huge difference. Well, you know what? Let me put my money where my mouth is. I've got my phone ready to go. I did the same thing. And in honor of my mom tonight, who would have been helped out by Pacific Clinics. There you go. Made my donation too. I don't want to ask you to do something I'm not willing to do as well. Jennifer Dalvarez, thank you so much for your $50. Friends, keep donating. We are going to be open doing this until Saturday at 5 p.m. So there's always time, but please donate now. Donate what you can while you can. You, we can't do it by ourselves, but together we can save lives. Together we can do it. Friends, clients tell us that Pacific Clinics saved my life. That's what they say. They say, no one believed in me until I got here. They say that this showed me that I can live on my own. They say this reconnected me with my family. Please keep donating and help them find jobs that they love to do. Now, I'm going to check back in on you in a little bit. But now, I just want to say thank you again. And I'm going to hand this back to you, David and Ellen. Take it away. Thank you so much, Zan. Great job, as always. Well, Pacific Clinics is quite literally in the business of changing lives. We want to share with you the story of one client whose life was transformed. Bernard Tesali began drinking in high school, and by 28, his alcoholism had spiraled out of control. In his 30s, he developed an opioid addiction. Well, his family sent him to various treatment centers, but nothing seemed to work until he came to Pacific Clinics. He was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and working with a therapist, he began the steady road to recovery. And we are happy to report Bernard earned his high school diploma and his peer partner certification. Now, here's the best part. In 2018, Bernard joined the Pacific Clinic's team, working as a health navigator and a peer partner, helping others to find their own road to recovery. Tonight, we present this year's Leadership Award to our own Bernard Tesali. Good evening. Thank you, Pacific Clinics, for this leadership award. I am honored more than you can imagine. Pacific Clinics' amazing team supported my recovery and sobriety. In my young life and well into my adult life, I struggled with addiction, first to alcohol and then to opioids. Despite my upbringing and a loving and caring family, my life was headed towards destruction and finally spiraled out of control. My family tried to help by placing me in other treatment centers, which were basically for substance abuse. 
Finally, when those treatment centers failed, I was referred by my girlfriend who researched different mental health facilities and found Pacific Clinics as a place where she believed I would get the help that I needed. When I arrived at Pacific Clinics and became a member, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I had a great therapist and a clinical team who worked with me to realize that my bipolar was not the end, and that helped me start on my road to recovery. Eventually, I decided to help others the way that I was helped. Today, I'm proud to say that I'm a peer partner and health navigator with the opportunity to return the blessings I received from Pacific Clinics, now helping others on their journey towards wellness. Whenever I have the opportunity, I remind myself and others of the three life lessons. Love yourself because you are worthy of love. Be patient with yourself. Understand that some steps take longer than others. And finally, forgive yourself. Setbacks happen along the way. Thank you again for honoring me with this leadership award. And please know that I will continue to contribute my leadership talents and skills to helping others. Thank you. Congratulations, Bernard. One thing we've learned, having a job can be a critical piece of mental health. A job can provide purpose and build self-esteem. But for those struggling with a mental illness, finding and keeping a job can be tough. Pacific Clinics is there to help. Take a look. Starting back to work after struggling with a mental illness can be daunting. Pacific Clinics supports its members with a full range of free employment services. They assessed my abilities. They get me placed. They've been a, a good help. Michael's goal was to someday be a licensed welder. And you know, there was a long period where I hadn't worked. They were helpful in uh, filling in those gaps. And Pacific Clinics has taught me how to reach that goal. Having employment and working, it, it really does and in my opinion, that it really does define us. It's that sense of meaning. It's a sense of going somewhere, doing something that we're, we're continuing to grow, um, have successes, have struggles. You got to get back out there and, and just put your boots and your hard hat on and just say, look, uh, I'm looking for work. Clients receive help finding job openings, polishing up their resumes and refining their interview skills the bigger picture in that is to kind of help them gain that independence and that, that, that ability to do it on their own. They definitely helped a lot with job leads and mock interviews and kind of uh, give myself that confidence because they not only, you know, provided me with the tools that I needed, but also motivated me to go to the interviews. A good portion of our clients have actually secured employment and in, in fields that are specific to what they wanted. Right now, I have a, a job as a behavioral interventionist, and I really enjoy it. And what we see traditionally is that when they get the jobs, you start seeing this, you know, you start seeing their, their mood, they're more interactive, they're, more, they're, they're happier, they feel more fulfilled. You know, they told me that I was able to do it, that I was capable of doing it, and, you know, they were right. <laughs> I was able to do it. It's about time for our final award of the evening, the Champion of Mental Health. I hold this dear to my heart. NBA great Meta Sandiford Artest was presented this award in 2019. A true friend of Pacific Clinics, Meta understands mental illness firsthand. After winning the 2010 championship game, he famously thanked his psychiatrist on national TV. I definitely want to thank my doctor, Dr. Sandy, my, uh, my psychiatrist. She really helped me relax a lot. Meta has committed himself to destigmatizing mental illness, and he has a message for tonight's winner. Shamika, I just want to say congratulations. You deserve it. People are finally recognizing what you are doing for humanity and giving back to the people. We from Queens, we from the same place. And we've seen a lot and been through a lot. And we have a lot of knowledge to share. So congratulations and keep it up. Love you. Today, Shamiqua Holtzclaw travels the world to share her story and encourages others to get the help they need. Winning those games and winning those championships, man, it was like the best feeling like on earth. You're out there winning one year after the next after the next. I mean, I felt like a rock star, I'm not gonna lie. I was like on top of the world. It was 1999. Shamiqua Holdsclaw, called the female Michael Jordan, was about to turn pro. 
people were counting on her to make women's basketball as big as the men's game. But part of what made Holdsclaw a champion would come to threaten her life. I've been in control of my body, you know, I'm an athlete. But it was like my mind was always, in a sense, detached. I can remember having visions of driving my truck in a tree. And I would say to myself, if I jumped off a building, would anybody care? And I just started popping my brain medication one pill at a time. You know, one, two. Honestly, I must have took like 10 to 15 pills. Next thing you know, I'm in an ambulance. I hear the, the machines running. I get there, and I just know I'm in a hospital, and I experience the worst night of my life. It's hard when somebody tells you you're bipolar. This is serious. This is something you really have to pay attention to. But along with adjusting to her new diagnosis, Holdsclaw had to face the consequences of her actions. Since November, my life changed dramatically. Legally, financially, socially, People are looking at me like, oh my God, she's a loose cannon or she's crazy. She tried to kill someone when that wasn't even the case. I remember feeling like no one cared, but I had great friends, I had great family support, but I just closed myself in this little box. The fact that Shamika was willing to talk about her experience with depression and how it had affected her career uh, was very important to us. To the commitment that you have made on a personal level to try to raise awareness and reduce stigma around She her. connected with the audience. You got a feel for her passion and her concern about this issue, not about just herself. It's like sometimes we just are so bottled up, you know, we think no one else is going through this. When all actuality, when you look at it and you open your mind, it's a lot of people dealing with the same things that you're dealing with. Oh, oh nice, Monica, good job. Use that backboard. But me now, just being Shamiqua, being able to go and speak to young girls about self-esteem and handling pressure feels just as good as any game when it's shot. Come on, you got it. Ah, nice try. Keep, keep trying. Those doors that I thought were closed because of my own fear and embarrassment are waiting open for me because I've dealt with me. I've confronted me. This is an illness that I have. This is something that I have to live with. This is how I'm gonna live a better life, how I'm gonna be a better daughter, a better friend, and a better citizen by getting the help that I need. For her tireless work to destigmatize mental illness, we are honored to present this year's Champion of Mental Health Award to Shaniqua Holtzclaw. Thank you, Pacific Clinics, for acknowledging me this evening with the Champion of Mental Health Award. As many of you may know, for most of my young life, I became a champion in the game of women's basketball. Those were exciting years. It launched me into a career in the WNBA with the Washington Mystics and landed me a position on a U.S. Olympic basketball team. Although those were some of the best moments of my life, I struggled with the stigma of mental illness. However, as a result of going to therapy, I embraced the fact that I had a mental illness, educated myself, and decided to dedicate my life to educating and supporting others with mental illness. I've now reached a point where I pride myself in being a voice for the voiceless and marginalized. This voice is expressed in my book, Breaking Through, Beating the Odd Shot After Shot, in the documentary film, Mind Game, The Unquiet Journey of Shamiqua Hostclaw, and my tremendous Upside podcast, and the other opportunities I have to speak about this topic, which brings me back to this award. I'm honored to receive this award from Pacific Clinics and remind all of you about the importance of this agency's work. The knowledge that you're helping numerous individuals and families on their journeys to recovery fuels my passion and brings me happiness. Thank you, Pacific Clinics, for all you're doing to support people with mental illness. I'm honored to be given this award and will treasure it. Thank you.
Congratulations, Shamiqua. Thanks for doing what you do. You truly are a champion of mental health. In just a few minutes, we'll be doing a little wine tasting. But first, how would you like to be $500 richer? Well, it's about to happen for someone here tonight. That drawing is just ahead. And we'll be checking on those final tallies as well, as we once again thank our donors and all of you for supporting the important work of Pacific Clinics. Next year, we look forward to seeing you all in person. Can't wait for that. It has been such an honor to be part of the Pacific Clinics family, and I believe the services you provide have helped so many people and help people thrive. I feel such gratitude on behalf of every person you have helped, including me, for giving me an opportunity to share my own personal stories and perhaps inspire others to seek the help they need. Finally, we turn things over to our auctioneer, Zan Ofterhide, to check in on our final count and give away that gift card. Zan. Thanks so much, David and Ellen. Let's see where we are. Our tally right now is over $56,000. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And you know what? Let's just keep those donations pouring in. Why not? Let's have fun with it. All right. Speaking of having fun, it's time to give our way our $500 gift card. So drum roll, please. All right. The randomized winner's name is Heather Jones. Yay, everybody at home, give a round of applause to Heather Jones. Yay. All right, thank you again to everybody who took the time out of their day to be part of our community. Thank you, thank you for donating during the paddle raise. Thank you for bidding in the silent auction. Thank you to Pacific Clinics themselves for offering these programs to keep families together, to keep mothers with their children. And now I'm going to throw it over to Kevin Luther of Voluptuary and Lucid Wines. Thank you, Zan. Good evening, everybody. My name is Kevin Luther, and I am the owner and winemaker here at Voluptuary and Lucid Wines. And today I will be leading you through a tasting of our five wine lineup. I want to start off by thanking you all for having me here to host you and for letting myself and my company be a part of your event tonight and your fundraising here today. So we'll be tasting through a five wine lineup. We have our white wine, the L1 Skin Contact Chardonnay Blend. Then we have our L2 Urban Flora Rosé, which is a really fun fruit forward rosé. We have our L3 Manifesto Barbera, which is a nice crisp kind of dark fruited blackberry fruit kind of red wine. Then we have our L7 Delirium Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a very full-bodied, rich red wine. And the last wine we'll taste will be the L8 Wanderlust Red Blend, which is a just wonderful, laid-back, easy-to-drink red wine. So we'll be working way, our way through those five wines here in a little bit. So if you have those in the fridge just chilling down or not, you can go ahead and open those up and get ready to taste those. And feel free to pour that first wine for yourself there and start sipping while we're hanging out. The first wine you have in front of you is going to be the L1 Skin Contact Chardonnay Blend. So you can go ahead and pull that out and pour that into your glass. So this wine is a really fruit forward style, but it also has more spice and weight than your average white wine. We call this wine Skin Contact because it is from a white grape, largely Chardonnay with a little Vignet, but it is fermented on the grape skins. So that skin contact fermentation is something you more commonly see in red wines. When it's done in a white wine, you're going to get a white wine with more intensity of flavor, more spice, more weight and length on the finish. So real treat of a wine, not your usual white wine, full of flavor, fruitiness, floral notes, caramel notes and smoothness though. So this one, Chardonnay, Vignet, organically grown, fermented on the skins and then aged in oak barrels. So these oak barrels contribute some of that caramel, vanilla, almost pastry-like note you may be noticing on this wine. So a little unique style, that nice skin contact barrel age style, very different from your average white wine. With that being said, this wine is going to pair wonderfully with some of the food kits you have with you today. So if you haven't already opened those up, go ahead and open those up and you, some of you have the charcuterie kit with meats and cheeses, some of you have the vegan uh, charcuterie pack, so to speak. And so this is going to pair really wonderfully with those le lemon and rosemary olives, because this does have that citrusy characteristic, maybe a pinch of like herbaceousness. So that's going to go wonderfully with those olives. Really nice match. Another really good match here is the cashews, because this wine does have that sort of 
buttery, pastry, nutty note that's going to go really well with that cashew flavor. Also, the lemon curds, uh, that's little side jars you have of that on some crackers, will play off that sort of citrus but pastry-like note because that curd is going to have some sweetness there. It's almost like a sweet lemon flavor profile that goes really well with this wine. And lastly, if you have those cheeses there, then really any of the cheeses are going to go well with this. But in particular, the mozzarella can go really well with this. Fontina can go really well with this. So lots of great options there as well. So with that being said, that more or less wraps up the first wine. Now you can go ahead and pour yourself the second wine, the L2 Urban Flora Rosé. So... This wine is a darker style rosé, largely from the Mission Grape variety. So this is an organically grown Mission Grape. Mission Grapes are one of the first grapes ever to come to California. It's a grape that was grown by the missionaries for sacramental wine. So beautiful history behind this grape and this wine. These are very old vines and a wonderful historic wine in general. It fell out of favor over the years because it was criticized for making kind of too light and fun and fruity of a wine. It wasn't a serious red wine, which I think <laughs> just sounds really wonderful for a fun style rosé. So this one focusing really on those strawberry, watermelon, cherry fruit flavors, a lot of easy drinking styles. And we call this one our dangerously easy to drink summer sipper. You know, this one's on the porch, by the pool, by the river, relaxing and enjoying a glass of wine. This can pair very well with food. We joke that this one pairs well with itself because, you know, you can drink this one while you're making dinner or while you're just relaxing and, you know, hanging out with friends. That being said, this goes wonderfully with the strawberry preserves on the crackers or, again, any of these cheeses, which, you know, play off of enhancing the richness this wine does have. This also can go very well with any of the dried fruits you have, particularly the strawberry, I'm sorry, the cherry, dried cherries are wonderful with this. And if you have those pomegranate pistachio uh, trail mixes, then that's a wonderful pairing as well. So a lot of good angles to go here. Of course, since this rosé was aged in oak, you do get a little bit of that pastry, nutty flavor like in the first wine, which can go very well with those cashews as well. The third wine here is our L3 Manifesto Barbera. By the way, these are our, our stainless steel wine tanks here behind us. We ferment our wines in stainless steel and then age them in a mixture of oak barrels and stainless steel as well. So, yeah, this wine is the L3 Manifesto Barbera. Now we're getting into the red wines. But as a nice intro to the red wines, this is one that is very fruit forward, more crisp, and it has an acidity and a freshness that in many ways reminds a lot of people of uh, a lighter wine, you know, like how whites and rosés oftentimes have more acidity. This isn't a heavy, dark red wine in the sense of being dry and earthy. This one is more crisp, fruit forward and fun. So you're going to get black cherry, blackberry, mulberry type fruit flavors. And then this was aged a little bit in stainless steel, but mostly in oak barrels with a little bit of other woods. Cherry wood and maple wood are the main woods I used on this wine. So in addition to the oak, which is going to give you some vanilla caramel smoky notes, that cherry wood really brings in a cherry almond note, and the maple wood brings in a maple molasses kind of characteristic that adds to the richness here. These are all organically grown grapes from Shake Ridge Vineyards in Amador County. So I haven't really mentioned this much, but our winery, we are here in Sacramento, California. We, are, we call ourselves an uh, urban winery which is to say we are making wine in the middle of the city at our production facility, our winery here in Sacramento. But our vineyards are out in the surrounding regions because you well, can't grow grapes in the city. So we have our own vineyards in surrounding regions such as the Sierra Foothills, Lodi, Clarksburg, and all around Northern California, wherever these organic grapes grow best. So we have our own vineyards. We also have partner vineyards that are small organic farms we work very closely with. In this case, Shake Ridge Vineyards in Ann Kramer is one of our favorite vineyards that we work with closely. Wonderful Barbera. This wine pairs very well. Now we're getting into, again, sort of a little more rich, dark fruit flavors. This is going to go very well with any of those darker fruits, figs, cherries that you have in your packs. This will go well with cheese, but I think for me, it's, it's more those fruits and those chocolates. 
So any chocolate or sweeter components in your pack go very well with this. This also can go very well with those meats. So if you have that prosciutto, some of that prosciutto, maybe with some fig, great match for this. Really fun food pairing wine, especially with that wonderful acidity. All my chef friends love this wine and love pairing this, especially with um, you know pork or any gamey meats are really great matches here. And now we're on to the fourth wine, the L7 Delirium Cabernet Sauvignon. So this wine is from the Cabernet Sauvignon grape, which is a grape from the Bordeaux region of France. And it is the most popular grape in the world. It is famous largely because of its deep, rich flavors. As a red wine, a lot of red wines are valued for their depth and richness and, and maybe some spiciness and, and length and weight, you know, that ageability that red wine is so famous for. Cabernet Sauvignon is the pinnacle of that kind of style. So the Bordeaux region of France is where it became famous, but now it is planted all over the world. In this case, it is planted in El Dorado County by Cedarville Vineyards. Again, one of our very close partners. They are at very high elevation at around 3,000 feet in the low mountains, granite foothills, and volcanic soils. And these very harsh soils, high elevations, very cold nights result in these grapes struggling and they have to penetrate deep into the soil to put down roots, and they have to really struggle against all these harsh conditions to grow the grapes. Therefore, that struggle leads to them producing more intense flavors in the grapes, and you get a very intensely flavored wine. You'll notice this dark fruit and this really beautiful spice on this wine. Some of it's black pepper spice, some of it is baking in warm spices like cinnamon and nutmeg and clove. And some of it is a little bit more of a green bell pepper, roasted red bell pepper, kind of almost herbaceous rosemary earthy spice. So you're gonna get all this cool mix of flavors from fruit to spice to earth. And I think that's just really what Cabernet Sauvignon, what really makes it great. This wine to accentuate those flavors, I aged this in oak barrels, but also with maple wood, like the Barbera, but also I went down the road of some hickory and some cedar woods which added to that spice, that herbaceousness, that earthiness, and layered upon it, which is why this has so many layers of flavor. Wonderful food pairing wine, this one. I mean, if you really want to go fully into a full meal, this one is a great steak wine. Or if you're vegetarian, this with portobello mushrooms or shiitake is wonderful. In these food pairing packs is another one that goes great with the uh, prosciutto and the cheeses, all that savory umami type character is wonderful with this wine. But you could also do go down a road of a little bit more of that fig, a little more of those dark fruits. So great matches all around in that area. And for the vegan food pairing packs, this is a particularly good match with those shiitake jerky. It's uh, shiitake mushroom stems with a really nice spice on them and it just really plays off the spice of this wine wonderfully. So, great match there. Last but not least, our L8 Wanderlust Red Blend. So I've mentioned, you know, we're growing our grapes here in Northern California, our best organic vineyards. We're making the wines here in Sacramento. But the grapes originate, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon originates from the Bordeaux region of France. Barbera originates from Italy, from Northern Italy. You know, down the line, Zinfandel originates in Croatia. Wine is this beautiful international thing. And I think one of the things I personally love about wine, what made me passionate about this industry, is we're pulling influences from cultures and locations all around the world. So you have all these beautiful influences, international influences. And so for me, the concept of wanderlust, when I named this wine, is the idea of bringing together these disparate influences from around the world and creating a wine, which we've made locally here, that expresses a lot of the awesome characteristics of these grapes from around the world and these cultures from around the world. So this wine is Barbera, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Zinfandel. All of these grapes were ripened to a, a really high level, so you're going to get very dark fruit, blackberry jam, blackberry pie, all these wonderful fruit characteristics, which I've then accentuated by aging it on oak barrels, but also some American oak bourbon whiskey style charred oak barrels to enhance that smokiness. On top of that, a little bit of hickory wood and a little bit of mesquite wood that really bring in that spice, that smokiness, and take it down that rabbit hole. So that beautiful mix of ripe fruit and a little spicy smokiness, I think is a really cool match 
for really, in many cases, any kind of um, smoky food pairing. So, I mean, I'm thinking barbecue, I'm thinking, you know, smoked meats, or again, that jerky is a really great match here. So those are all really good pairings here. With that being said, thank you all so much for having me here for this wine tasting and for allowing me and my company to be a part of this fundraiser and your whole experience. So if you've purchased the VIP package and want to join us and ask any more questions you may have about the wines and pairings and myself and the winery, please join us for a private Zoom meeting beginning in a few minutes. We will put the link in the chat and you can join us there. Thank you all for joining and have a great evening and see you soon. And that concludes this special event, Pacific Clinics, an evening in Tuscany. To our generous donors and everyone who participated tonight, we thank you for your support. Good night and thanks for joining us.